it's common for designers to say, well, I need security, so that means I need encryption because they think encryption always equals security. That's not always the best move. Encryption provides secrecy, but secrecy might or might not be what you really care about. Secrecy is nice if you can get it, but sometimes the cost is too high. In particular, good encryption invokes export controls. If you want to ship a piece of equipment and you're in the U.S. and you want to ship it out of the U.S., if you have advanced technology, you are subject to export controls by the Department of Commerce or by the Department of State. There's a huge amount of paperwork and pain you might have to go through depending on the specifics of your situation. That's gotten better over the years, but it's still an issue you need to deal with. So before you start saying, well, I'm going to use encryption to get security, ask yourself whether that's really what you need and whether your security requirements make it worthwhile having to deal with potential regulation, filling out forms, and the risk of being told no. Let's use firmware distribution as an example. Let's say you want to send a firmware update and you want security on that firmware update. Well, we already know that using a symmetric key encryption for the firmware is a bad idea because if someone captures one of your systems and they extract the symmetric key, now they can not only decrypt your firmware update, but they can forge fake versions that are malicious because it's a symmetric key. So you'd never want to use a symmetric key because it leaves you exposed to malicious copies circulating. You could instead say, well, I'll be smarter than that. I'll use public key encryption. And that way, even if someone captures my system, they might get a copy of the image, but they can't sign bad firmware updates. And that's OK. That's better. But what you've done is you've exposed yourself to potential export control issues. And you haven't really 100% stopped people from reading your firmware image because it has to be decrypted to run in your system. And if an adversary gets hold of the public decryption key by reverse engineering your system, or just reverse engineers the bit image out of your chip, they're going to have your firmware update anyway. And secrecy wasn't really what you're after, perhaps, because secrecy is nice. But what you really need is not secrecy. What you need is secure boot. And secure boot isn't about secrecy at all. Secure boot is about integrity. Sure, you can add integrity as part of an encryption process by adding some additional mechanisms. But you're using a sledgehammer to solve a problem that can be solved a lot easier. If you're worried about export controls or you're worried about the computational burden of encrypting and decrypting, another path is to use a secure digital signature based on a public key digest. This does not make the firmware image secret. What it does is it computes a hash of the entire message and stores it to make sure that when you run, you can guarantee with cryptographic integrity that your image has not been modified, but there's no secret. The hash function doesn't hide information, it's just used for confirmation. And the nice thing is, there tend to be blanket exemptions for public signatures in export laws because it cannot hide information. You should always consult with a legal expert when interpreting export law. But in general, if you're using a hash approach instead of an encryption approach, you're going to find out that your export concerns are minimal or, in some cases, essentially non-existent because you're not trying to hide information, so it's not a problem to the export authorities. Now, you may want to use per-download encryption as defense in depth technique, and if you can clear that past export regulations or you're only using it within the US, that may be fine, but consider that if what you really want is integrity, use an integrity mechanism, a secure digital signature, rather than a secrecy mechanism. It not only saves you computational power, but also makes the regulatory burden much lighter.